I'm here with the president and CEO of BlackRock Silver in Zurich. Andrew, it's a pleasure to be here with you in person. Thanks very much. Great to be here. It's been a while since we really last talked. In fact, I was uh, talking with you in early 2020 when you had come into BlackRock Silver. You had this interesting project in the Walker Lane District and you drilled it and everything has Boom. changed dramatically. Boom. Yeah. So, Let's, uh, let's go back to the starting point and give us a bit of an overview of this project that yeah. has grown significantly over the last few years. Yeah, well, you know, in 2020, we picked up um, a consolidation of what's known as the Tonopah Silver District. So this district between 1900 and 1930 produced just under 200 million ounces of silver and 2 million ounces of gold. But around the Great Depression, production shut down. There was um, uh, the last mine in the district that was producing was right at the edge of her property. They flooded it out. They mined it down to around 1,880 feet. And they took out all this debt to fund these heavy-duty diesel generators and water pumps to be commissioned in the late 1920s. It took three or four years for them to be built and shipped over from Europe. And by the time they were, metals prices had absolutely tanked. And this company, uh, they couldn't pay back the debt that they, that they used for these uh, water pumps. So the company went into Chapter 11 in 1930, and no one had back, been back in there until we were able to... to to consolidate that together. We picked it up. Our very first drill hole in um, June of 2020 is when we got started and it was a proof of concept and it was simple. The old timers didn't stop mining because they ran out of gold and silver. They stopped mining due to those technical difficulties and metals prices. Well, our first drill hole hit 30 meters of a kilogram per ton silver equivalent. We hit two veins uh, on top of that that the old timers didn't even know about. And since then, we've drilled 125,000 meters. Uh, we stepped out four kilometers along the same vein system that those uh, guys stopped with. And we've now backstopped evaluation just a couple weeks ago with 100 million ounces silver equivalent at the highest grades of any large project in the in the business so it's looking good we think we can add another 40 50 million ounces just by infilling some of the gaps on this four kilometers we've got about one and a half kilometers that yet that we've yet to drill out that'll connect our three deposit areas and turn it into one big vein system if we get around to it but this is something that every company is going to want to have fantastic so you, you've hit a pretty significant milestone 100 million plus equivalent ounces so what's the breakout down of that's mostly it's silver. about 50 50 on an instant situ metals basis like our, our silver equivalent is just silver and gold we're not a zinc mine pretending to be a silver mine uh, we're a, just gold and our pesky by silver and our pesky byproducts gold and that's important too because from a processing point of view this would be just a dory like we don't need to go through you know flotation or make concentrates we don't need a smelter this should be really straightforward. It's, you know, the veins average about four meters thick. Uh, it's about 80% long hole stoping, 20% cut and fill. We're not interested in the narrow vein uh, bullshit that a lot of companies are. But the grades, I mean, this is block diluted grades too. So we factored in dilution into this where a lot of companies don't. But, you know, there's not many large silver projects in the industry, but generally all of them are like between one and like 175 grams per ton. There's only three stories in the industry that are above 400 and and uh, you know it's us Dolly Varden and Vizsla and, and um, yeah it's nice to stand out being on private land in Nevada at that so it's on private land oh yeah yeah that's that's very important so there's no permitting risk I mean it's yes. something that could be expedited right into development should we want to we don't deal with the federal government on anything so that's another great reason Nevada is a good place to be to begin with but we're literally like our deposits cut across by US Highway 96 which is uh, the we're the halfway point between Las Vegas and Reno that's the highway that gets there you know I've got a hundred million ounces of silver underneath Burger King Actually, yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty it. good. So we got, you don't have to build roads, you don't have to move power lines, you don't need to worry about man camps. There's 20 motels within walking distance. And some food there too. Yeah, yeah, well, you got, I got a subway, you got A&W, anything yeah, you anything want, we got. Yeah. Well, that's, a, we joke about that, but that's quite significant because a lot of times deposits are found in the middle of nowhere, so infrastructure correct. is very expensive. And, is a killer of projects, so this is right. a good location. And it's a great jurisdiction. Rule of law, we don't have to worry about banditos, you know, there's no labor, you know, in the COVID, not a single mine in Nevada shut down for one day, whereas in Mexico, 
you know, they were shut down for months and months at a time. That's so, right. yeah. So that's great. So the next steps, you mentioned you're going to infill, you're going to connect these deposits. That's right. the next focus. That's low-hanging fruit. I mean, we don't have to step out another inch, but it's still wide open to the northwest along strike. But internal to our, you know, we got three different resource areas laid out, but it's not really three resource areas. If we do a little bit of drilling, connect the dots, it'll be one big deposit, at which point we think we'll have some of the best economics in the industry. Very nice. So you're doing this work during a difficult silver market environment. Obviously, the silver stocks are really down in, in the dumps. Uh, investor interest is very low at the moment. Yeah. So you're doing the difficult work now. Well, the best thing about our project is it doesn't, you know, we, our, our resource is based off a 200 gram per ten cutoff, which we, it's actually higher than anyone uses. Yeah. But, you know, that's what we project the mining cost to be roughly. But even if we double the, the cutoff grade to 400, and no one in the industry shows what, what, what this would look like, but our sensitivity, we go up to 400, we're still left with 70 million ounces, but the average grade goes up to just under 800. This is a project you're not going to F up, you know, this is something where yeah. everything can go wrong and you'll still want to have it, so, yeah. So, it has a, the grade is very important here. Yeah. Um, and before we end here, there is another project in the company in, in northern uh, Utah, uh, Nevada, sorry. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit more about what makes this so interesting, it's, it's positioning. And yeah, well, you know, it's, a, it's called Silver Cloud. It's right up on trend of the Midas mine, which produced 3 million ounces at 30 grams per ton head grade. It's where Pierre Lassonde made his name. Um, but Hecla owns that, and Hecla owns the Hollister mine, when we're literally the donut hole in the middle, 45 square kilometers there. We hit 70 grams gold and 600 grams silver over a meter and a half last year on what was just going to be a throwaway drill program for us. We, we owed the vendor three drill holes, but obviously Tonopah had emerged as a flagship. But that's a 105 gram meter discovery hole that lines up like a, like a rifle staring down the system at Midas, and we think there's something there. We, we just renegotiated the deal there, so it's very, very low barrier for us to keep. It puts a big target on her back too. You know, if I'm Hecla, I'm looking at that and then saying, hey, you got the 100 million ounces plus plus. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's something we'll keep, but uh, uh, I think Tonopah's, we've got a clear path forward to, you know, probably add 50 to 100 more million ounces there with a, with a little bit more luck on the drills moving forward. That's excellent. And when the silver price comes really alive again, then and you've got leverage. Right, yeah built in. That's fantastic. Well, yeah. Andrew, thank you very much for the update. It's very interesting. We'll continue to follow the drill program in the coming year and see how this continues to develop. Thank, thank you, very, you much. very much. Yeah, awesome. Likewise. Cheers.